So Eve, it's just been just over a week since you and your teammates got back from China. Um, has it sunk in yet what you've been able to achieve? I don't think it's actually sunk in, but it feels amazing at the same time. It, it's been a complete whirlwind since we got back to Scotland and um, I'm just trying to do as much normal as I can, but there's just so much going on and <laughs> um, yeah, so many people want to speak to you and see you and uh, it's so great to catch up with family and friends and it's just great to spend this time with them. I mean, you have had so much attention, haven't you? And you've done this brilliant photo shoot for Hello mm -hmm. magazine as well. I think we've got some pictures of that. What what was that like? Does it feel quite surreal that you're these massive stars now? Like, I, I couldn't believe when I went into the supermarket today uh, to grab a copy and like, you're, you're right there, um, you and your team on the front of Hello as well. And then like a four <laughs> or five page spread inside. And do you know what? It was such, such great fun. And to do it alongside that my four teammates uh, made it even better. Uh, it was such such great fun to get out of the tracksuit and the hoodies and the trainers and put on dresses and heels and, and get glammed up and get hair and makeup done. So it was really, really good fun. And, and you and the rest of the team, you seem really close, uh, but you're the skip. So what, what does that involve? What's the, what's the team dynamic? We are. We are a, a very close team. And I think that's what makes us such a good team. Um, being skip, of course, you take a lot of pressures, don't you? A lot of decisions come down to myself, but of course, I, I have the teams back as well. Like I, I have them to, to get reassurance from, and I also have them for advice. So, as a skip, yes, your your main job is making those tactical decisions. You're also throwing those last two stones that can win and lose you games. Um, you get the slack if you if you if you lose, but you also get the praise if you win. But um, yeah, my my team are fantastic. Um, I'm so proud of them. Especially Especially being their first Winter Olympic Games. I mean, you say it's down to you at the end. That was, that was huge pressure. <laughs> there was. There was a lot of pressure out there. But do you know what was the great thing? We really enjoyed it. Um, Vicky actually came up to me halfway through the, the final and said, I'm having so much fun. And then to hear one of your teammates say that just made me relax. And it was. It was probably one of the most fun games of curling I've ever played. And I mean, you have been working towards this for so long and you've been at three other Olympics. What did it feel like when you actually finally had it round your neck? I mean, was it, was it everything you thought it was going to be? And you've got the medal, <laughs> you've got the medal, you know, there now. It's incredibly heavy, actually. It just is. had a wee hold of it, it before it, we came it on is. air. It weighs a ton. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, how is it fair that it's taken me four times to get this and the other girls it's taken them the first time? Um, but yeah, I've, I've worked very, very hard to get this round my neck. Um, it's been a journey. I've gone through, uh, I've gone through, I guess, career threatening surgery on my hip. Um, we went to the World Championships last year and, and didn't even qualify Team Great Britain a spot at the, the Winter Olympic Games. And um, on the back of that, there was a squad system put together by British Curling. And yeah, we were, the, we were the five athletes that were chosen out of that squad after a lot of very hard work. Yeah. We then went on, got gold at the European Championships, topped the Olympic qualifying event. We're one of the three teams to, to get the last spots. And yeah, and now we have a gold medal round our neck. So it's definitely not been smooth, um, but do you know what? Like, I always feel like you need to kind of have the lows to, to get the highs. And, you know, as I said, you've already been to three other Olympics. I mean, how difficult was it to, you know, each time not get the gold? Were you just still so driven? Mm. Did you ever think this isn't going to happen yeah. for me? Or was that just not, did that never kind of enter your mind? You were so focused. It, it did enter my mind. Um, it was a dream of mine to always get this gold medal. And, and there was times that, that I questioned myself whether I would get it around my neck. Um, as you say, I'd been at three. Um, the first one in Vancouver was was a definitely a, a learning experience for me, followed by my bronze medal in Sochi, and then a disappointing fourth place in Pyeongchang. And and after that, like you do question whether you're going to carry on, whether you're good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Like I'm so glad I did carry on. Um, I've really put in a lot of work, and I actually don't think I've I've missed a day's training in the last two three years and um yeah like it's it's great to know that all the hard work not just by me by the rest of the team as well has paid off well i mean i don't think people actually realize how much training you put in you know the hours you put mm -hmm. in i think we've got some footage here of, of you training i'm not sure what, what rink that is but you know you do put so many hours in i mean what what does it take mm -hmm. how dedicated you have to be 
we put in a lot of hours and we're very lucky this is the National Curling Academy in Stirling and, and that's where we are based and um, we're so lucky to have UK Sport and National Lottery funding to, to help us be full-time athletes. Um, every day we'll be on the ice for five, six hours, um, some individual sessions, some team sessions. We'll also then have strength training three days a week and also conditioning training two to three times a week. So. Like, you've got to be fit to be good now. I do believe that. And, and for myself as well, the more physically fit I am, I feel the more mentally fit I am as well. Because, like, you've got to be on your ball out there, don't you? Like, one, one wrong decision can, can cost you the game. So, um, yeah, the sport's definitely, definitely moving um, forward in terms of being fitter, um, getting a lot more power behind that brush when you're sweeping. And, um, yeah, a lot of leg drive out the hack as well. And elite level, uh, elite sport at this level uh, that, that you're at, it must be so much about psychology. Mm -hmm. So do you have a kind of team of sports psychologists working with you? And and what, what do they say to you? Yeah, we're, we're very lucky um, at British Curling that we've got such a fantastic array of uh, support services that, that help us. And um, it is really important, the team dynamics. And especially for, for us five girls, we were individuals at the start of the year. Like we were nine individuals fighting for an individual spot and and that's hard like it was very hard um, and then when we got put together like I hadn't played with two of the two of the four girls so it's difficult to, to suddenly make a, a relationship up that's good enough for you to compete at the highest level in sport mm -hmm. um, so we worked very very hard as a team um, we worked very hard with our head coach Dave um, our team coach Christian and um, yeah made sure that we were in the best place when we went out to the Olympic Games in Beijing so the, you won a gold and the men's team won a silver. I mean, what does this mean for curling? Do you, do you hope that you've inspired lots of, lots of young people to take it up? I mean, does, it, does it look healthy, the future of the sport? I think the future of the sport is very healthy just now. As you say, like the men coming away with that silver medal at the Olympic Games as well. Like we cannot forget that. Like those guys are, are in my opinion, one of the best teams in the world. They got beat by Nicholas Adin from Sweden, who has to be the greatest curler of all time. Like that, that final was one of the best games of curling I've ever watched. Like it came down to, of course, like less than an inch. Um, and believe you me, those boys will be back at the Olympic Games and um, no doubt you'll, you'll see them on that podium again mm -hmm. but I think for for the sport of curling in Scotland in Great Britain it's it's fantastic I think it's um, great to to get it out there again and get it get it on the papers get it on the TV because as a lot of people know once every four years we, we get the great publicity and um, so it'd be great if we can make that all year round and um, I'd love to leave a, a, a lasting legacy uh, um, and what about you in the future are you going to be defending uh, your title in four years in Italy I get asked that question a lot, and honestly, I, I don't know. Um, I want to I want to savour these memories. I want to make the most of, of the next few weeks and months. And um, of course, there's going to be that time that I need to sit down and, and decide what I'm going to do in the future. Um, you're still young. I mean, you know. I am young, but I am the oldest in the team now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's relative. You could have another two or three Olympics. Well, for maybe. Who knows? Um, it depends if the body holds up to that. But, <laughs> but as I say, like I'm just going to take um, take it as it comes. And um, yeah, I'm sure there will be a decision at some time. But right now, I'm just going to enjoy the moment um, with the, with this gold medal and and the and the team that I'm so proud of. Quite right. Enjoy it. Uh, well deserved. And thank you so much for joining us on Scotland tonight. Thank you.